We're going to talk today about all the elements that go into the new world of track and trace with my guest today, Dirk Martin. He is Senior Director of Transportation Planning with Univar Solutions. Dirk, welcome. Welcome, thank you. Sketch for me, if you will, some of the elements we have to keep in mind when we are addressing the issue of tracking and tracing freight today. Well, uh, with the new solutions that are coming out, you've got greater visibility, so now you can see the dynamic routing of the trucks as they're going down the highway. You can actually take into consideration traffic patterns, speeds, so forth, and then ever so recently, then they've even been starting to take into consideration weather patterns. So you can start to look at as well, you know, how that may affect the movement of your shipments towards the customer, uh, delays or expedites. Uh, so there's a lot with the track and trace solutions now. Uh, that help you with the dynamic routing of your of your routes and allow you to be more flexible uh, in satisfying your customers. Well, we've been talking about this tracking and tracing for a decade since the dawn of time in terms of freight. Why now are we seeing where it's actually possible to include all these complex elements? It, it's the next level in the ele uh, evolution of it. Uh, you know, originally it was just uh, more or less GPS in the truck, but now they're putting the dynamic analytics behind it. Uh, to actually layer in, you know, those type of things such as, you know, the day-to-day -day weather patterns. Uh, things like, you know, as we drive to work every day, uh, the driving maps that we use tell us how to change, you know, from one route to another to be able to avoid a stop, a wreck, so forth. These do the same thing, but they do it across the national scale. Uh, so, you, you know, where you're doing the last mile delivery, it's great. Uh, because you're within the city and it's helping you with that. But even on the longer routes, and we found that you know recently, even with some of the hurricanes that have happened, uh, or other you know severe storms, uh, it allows us to look at those patterns as they're happening and determine: Do we want to go into that region a day ahead of time and go ahead and deliver to our customers early uh, to get it in before the storm, or call the customers and say, "Do you want to wait two days and go ahead and let the storm pass and so forth?" Uh, and work with them on their schedules to make sure that they don't have downtime uh, and we don't actually miss their anticipated delivery. So there's a predictive element to it. You're talking about conditions that you can see coming, not right. ones that are happening this very moment. Right. Correct, yeah. It, it's much more proactive than it was in the past and so forth. Uh, allows you to you know, really satisfy your customers' uh, needs and so forth. With a lot of delays that happen with shipments, you know, uh, downtime on factories. I mean, you know, the industry we're in is is a is a commodity uh, for the the initial manufacturing of a lot of products, and so you know, you take a factory down, you can have hundreds, if not thousands, of workers waiting. It's a huge loss of money for the company and so forth. But if we can be proactive with them, they can reschedule, maybe make something else, or you know, we can change the whole schedule to be able to satisfy you know their needs and so forth. It, I would imagine less applicable when it comes to short term, like changing conditions of the moment. Like if I'm in an automobile and I'm using an app to tell me that there's a traffic jam up ahead, it's telling me, well, you can take this surface street or something. If I'm driving an 18-wheeler, I don't have that option, right? So well, yes and no. Believe it or not, you know, so I'm from Chicago, and believe it or not, there are days when we get a major accident and so forth, and we will reroute the trucks, and uh, we can send the dynamic routing to the units in the trucks uh, that are you know, giving them their, their logistics to tell them how to go a down or around a different route, uh, use a different loop or something around the city to still get to the customer on time, or call, again, call the customers and say, you know, we may be a half an hour or 45 minutes to an hour late and so forth, and again, give them a little bit of time so that on their loading docks as well, as we all know, you know, deliveries are starting to get more and more time critical, and you're having to have appointments, you know, for your warehouse time uh, for offloading. 
And so it allows you that flexibility as well to let them know that you, know, you might be slightly late so they can move somebody else into the slot and reschedule you. Okay, so it can be, and to a certain extent, reacting to conditions of the moment, but it sounds like an even greater value if it's something you can predict like a day or two in advance or even before that. Correct. Especially for the truck that, yes, it can go to another loop, but it can't go into a neighborhood and yeah. get around uh, a traffic jam. Well, and as you know, you know when, when those types of major uh, weather events or, or you know, other types of catastrophes happen, um, usually the capacity in the entire network uh, gets tight. And so then the carriers, you know, rates go up, carriers don't have capacity. Again, predicting in advance, you can try and work around that to make sure that you've got the capacity for your load or that you're avoiding those additional costs. Yeah. What is the state of the art? Are there still some gaps and lags in information or is all this information at our command now to allow us to do the best possible job in, in planning our freight movements? I still think that there's some, some innovations that could come with it. I mean, there's a lot of visibility, but uh, I think it more the challenge on this side now is less on the data coming at us, but how do we utilize it? Ah. Okay, there's a, there's a, and there's, but there is more data out there. Correct. Which makes it possible. I mean, we could in fact be inundated with data. We got to figure out how to use and know, know what's working and what's not. Right? Just like big data from, you know, the last decade, it comes at you, how do we use it now? Yeah, and also there, I would imagine we'd get some alerts that maybe turn out not to be alerts by the time you get to that place. So you have to, how do you understand what is truly something you need to deal with versus something that you might just want to ignore? It's like just noise out there. No, very true. You know, you, you might react to, to something that is anticipated to happen and it may not have actually realize, but you're reacting to it and you're minimizing the, the problem to yourself and your customer. So I think in the long run, they're still going to be happy that you, know, you minimize the problem even though you may have reacted to something that didn't actually happen. Yeah, you mentioned last mile, we had been talking about really the big trucks and longer hauls. Is this equally applicable to within a city, which would make it easier to like get around traffic jams and, and things like that? So delivery vans, smaller, smaller deliverers? Um, Does this work for them or not? So we don't uh, ourselves actually use delivery vans, but I can see where it would be, it, even with you know, our larger trucks delivering and stuff, full loads. Uh, again, like I said, you, know, you, you can use a different route, you can see in advance the traffic patterns in the morning. You at least have a two to three hour window to adjust to uh, what's happening. Yeah. So this is already having an impact, is it? I mean, in the future, what do you, where do you see the future of this going? What new bells and whistles and new things might we expect? Significantly for us, it's happening. Um, you know, a lot of our customers are much happier. Um, you know, it used to be that if you could tell the customer within a day when the load was going to happen, they were happy. Um, you know, as we all know, uh, you know, being able to track your load down to the minute uh, due to certain retailers and stuff has, has made it critical. Uh, for even the, the large B2Bs to be able to deliver in those same time frames now. The expectation has really gotten tight, and this does allow us to do that now, to adjust our schedules by an hour, 45 minutes, or half an hour as to when they're going to deliver. So, you know, the, the technology is definitely there. Yeah, and what we've been talking about here, it sounds like it's mostly a, a discussion about routing Correct. strategies as opposed to security and monitoring truck performance and things like that, which is another aspect of visibility. Is that a whole different uh, ball of wax, so to speak? Yeah, that's you know, another beautiful aspect of, of a lot of the telemetrics that are going on the trucks and stuff. Uh, you know, that, that you can do performance of the truck, uh, fuel mileage, you know, the economy, uh, see if you've got good driving patterns with your drivers, are their behaviors correct for the routes and so forth. So there's a lot of things to be done there as well that, that can help the fleet then save money and pass it on to their customers as well. It's great to see that there's this new level of visibility. This can be a real benefit to shippers and, and, and carriers. Dirk, thank you so much for explaining it to us. We really thank appreciate you. your being with us. Thank you. I've been speaking with Dirk Martin of Univar. Thank you very much for watching.